In this video, I'm going to be teaching you exactly step by step what we've done to recover this website and gain back 230% of its traffic. My name is Kajra Dash and I'm the head SEO and director at Search Root. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can recover your website if you've been hit by the core algorithm update or the helpful content update. I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know when it comes to recovering a website from start to finish. Let's take a look at this case study first. The client's website was in the technology niche and they had recently been hit by a core algorithm update and they had lost over 50% of their traffic. The real bummer about this website was the fact that the website owner was actually in the process of selling the website for upwards of $2 million. And when the website essentially got hit, they decided to reach out to me and hire me for consultancy and recovering the website. They had gone from ranking for over 482,000 keywords down to 202,000 keywords, which meant they would lost over half their traffic. But very quickly we recovered it and the website is now stronger than it has ever been before. It now ranks for over 600,000 keywords and I'm going to show you every step we took to recover this website. I'm going to break this video down into five main sections. Toxic backlinks, content pruning, technical SEO, content strategy, and further growth. The first step we took for recovering this website was we identified any toxic backlinks and we submitted a disavow. For our disavow, we decided to use the tool Link Research Tools, also known as LRT. Now, to get the most accurate results using Link Research Tools, you need to export your backlink profile from Ahrefs, SEMrush, Majestic SEO, and Google Search Console. The reason for that is because there's some links that certain tools never pick up. For example, look at this website here on Ahrefs, it only shows we have 1,000 referring domains, but when we export our entire backlink profile from every single tool and plug into link research tools, it shows that we actually have 5,000 referring domains. So there's a massive discrepancy, and to be able to complete the most accurate disavow, you need to do this, otherwise you'll end up doing more harm than good to your website. Once we have imported all of our links into LRT, we then want to categorize all of the links into 37 different subcategories. However, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the main five that we were looking at when we were doing the disavow for this website. Category number one that we labeled as Tox1 links are domains that is not indexed in Google, often assigned for a penalty. Category number two is Tox2 style links. These are domains that the theme of the website is marked down as malware, malicious, or virus. Category number three is these are links from a page without an external link on a weak domain. Now, these links can actually be powered up by building tier two links, and they can be deemed as good links further down the line. Category number four is susp3. These are backlinks coming from a weak page, but has more than 10 backlinks from the same network and can possibly be deemed as a PBN network. Category number five is SUSP5. These are backlinks from domain themes that are listed as hacking, suspicious, or pornography style links. Outside of these five categories, there were other toxic links that we also had to disavow that were high DR links that weren't actually pushing any power. Now, the good thing about link research tools is once you actually give link research tools the data, so once you have actually imported the link data, it will categorize most of the links for you and essentially you can very quickly see which links to disavow and which links to keep. Step number two for the website was we created a Google Sheet and we imported all of the pages on the website and divided it into clicks and impressions. So the four categories that we mainly focused on were no clicks, no impressions were highlighted in red, no clicks, some impressions were highlighted in orange, some clicks and some impressions were highlighted in yellow, pages that were getting clicks and impressions were highlighted in green. We decided to spend the bulk of our time on focusing on categories one, two and three. Pages that fell into category one, we decided to be strict and deleted off the website. Pages that fell into category two, we looked further and realized that there are a lot of them that don't have topical authority on and 50% of them we actually ended up deleting also. And the other 50% we decided to go back through and update the content. Pages that fell into category three, we decided to build more internal links to we re-edited the existing content to make certain that it was matching the intent and we also decided to use unique images on those pages. In total, we ended up deleting 650 total pages off that website, which meant we went from 4,400 pages down to 3,850 pages total across the entire website. 
Step number three is we decided to do a technical SEO audit across the website and fix any blurring issues. We ran a screen frog audit across the website and very quickly saw that there was a lot of 404 pages and double 301 pages that we had to fix. Aside from screen frog, we also took a look at any errors in Google search console for the site and seeing if there were any glaring issues that we had to fix. I recommend doing a technical SEO audit frequently on your website just to see if there are any glaring issues that you can very quickly fix, especially if you are scaling out content velocity. Now you remember earlier in the video we decided to prune pages off the website, meaning that we were actually deleting the pages. What we're actually going to be doing now is looking at specific silos on the website that we don't have topical authority on yet and add missing articles to those silos. Let me explain, if you have a website that you want to try and rank for for the keyword best smartphones, Google would expect you to have an article on 50 different smartphones reviewing them and then Google would give your website more trust and would rank you higher for smartphone related keywords. If you only have four or five articles about smartphones on your website, you won't be classed as what's called topical authority in this space. And for this website, we had a lot of half filled silos that we decided to produce articles in those silos for. As you can see in this example diagram, when we'd done a content gap in these three silos, we lacked 75 articles against our competitors. So we decided to focus our time on winning topical authority in these three silos. Step number five, which is the further growth of the website and also focusing on our off-page SEO, we decided to build more trustworthy and powerful links to the website. Now, one thing that was super important for this website is the fact that we had just done a disavow. And the last thing we wanted to do is essentially build more toxic and spammy links. In fact, what we actually want to show to Google is that we have actually cleaned up our act and we are no longer building PBNs or spammy links to our website. And the best way to achieve that is what's called a backlink rejuvenation. Backlink rejuvenation is super important after doing a disavow because we are looking at our competitor's toxicity score and making certain that we are building super safe backlinks to our website, which shows to Google that we aren't doing anything black hat. For the backlinks, we opted to start slow by only building 10 links a month, and then we started to scale up the link velocity, which is super important. Otherwise, if you end up building links too quickly to your website, that can also be a massive red flag in Google's eyes. Process when it comes to building links is pretty easy. We looked for niche relevant websites with a minimum of 500 traffic, low toxicity levels, high trust, and also high power. After we spot checked all the websites, we then decided to reach out to the website owners asking if we can essentially get a link from their website. For the outreach process, you can either use hunter.io and manually email the website owners, or you can use a tool called Pitchbox. We decided to use Pitchbox because it's a lot easier to organize through the emails and also keep on top of things, especially if you have multiple staff. By doing everything in this video, we ended up recovering the website fully and the website is actually in a much better state than what it was before. If you want results like these, then make certain to do everything that was covered in this video and you will recover your website. Otherwise, you can get my team to take a look at your website for free by heading over to cadradash.com and filling out the form at the bottom of the page for a free consultation. Make sure to subscribe for more SEO case studies like this and as always, remember to take action.